I'm not even joking. This iPad was released in October of 2014. And the fact that this even works is outstanding. Wait a second. This is old. This thing is old as dirt. And if you look down and you'll notice it's running, what is it? iPad OS 15.8.4. Four. That's just basically proof that we're on an old iPad. Okay, anyway, let's get out of here. This is the prompter software. We're gonna get into what this is exactly shortly, but I wanna show you something that's absolutely sick with this setup. So I'm gonna press play. Oh, by the way, it's a little hard to see because I've got this glare and this cable, this is just power, right? Because this thing is old as dirt and it'll probably die if I unplug it for like longer than 15 seconds. So we're gonna hit play. Watch this. <clears throat> I've got a microphone right here for proximity, but I'm gonna whisper. I'm absolutely floored how well this seems to pick up my voice, even when I'm whispering. Okay, and now I'm gonna freestyle. I'm gonna talk about something that's not on the iPad. I'm just like freestyling, talking, whatever. And now I'm gonna go back to it. Elgato really should be taking notes because this is insane. Wow. As I stated earlier, this is the iPad Air 2, which Apple announced on October 16th, 2014. That's over 10 years ago. And you can tell because this thing is dusty as hell. Let me like clean this really quick. So what exactly does this have to do with fixing Elgato prompter? Also, what can Elgato do to fix this overall? And the thing is, I'm not alone in this. If you just do a quick Reddit search, you'll actually see a lot of people are having some major issues with the prompter software that ships with the Elgato prompter. I've got Elgato Camera Hub open. This is the software that runs prompter. And first we're gonna go into preferences. We're gonna check for updates and we are up to date, latest version. Cool, as of July 8th, 2025. Okay, now there are a few options here for what you want to display on prompter, right? So right now it's set to display, which is my um, extended display. And then you have chat, which is a Twitch overlay. If you're streaming, you can use that to put chat on your prompter, which is kind of sick. I haven't tried it yet, but then there's this text option. Now, what you're going to see here is we've got an example script. I've got another camera rolling and you're going to see prompter on the screen or on your screen right now. If we go back to here on my screen, um, from the bottom, you'll see I have voice sync enabled. Voice sync is like the thing that everybody's freaking out about. Um, you can choose the input device. So it's my MacBook Pro microphone, which is a pretty good mic in terms of the voice sync catching your voice. I've adjusted the font size because I'm shooting at 50 millimeter and I need the font to be a little bit bigger. You can change your font, your background color, all that stuff. I actually adjusted the margins slightly because I found that if I made the margins a little too big, it would show me like scanning and we, we don't need that. So uh, we, we wanna like look natural on camera, right? That's the whole purpose of having a teleprompter. And then obviously uh, the script. So they named this one welcome, which is their example script. And then uh, your brightness, your contrast, and you can power it on and off and you can choose prompter. I don't know if you can put multiple prompters on this, but I guess, sure. So we got our script here and I'm gonna try reading this live. So let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna hit play. By the way, I don't know if you could see this on camera, but on the top right, it's scrolling. It's not even waiting for me. Oh, cause I said the word camera. On the top right, I believe it says active. There were people that were having issues and I had this problem too, where you would hit play and it would just say getting ready in perpetuity. It would never actually start working. That's not optimal. Not a great start, Elgato. But here, let's try reading this here. Ready to roll the camera? Whether it's a video script or talking points, Camera Hub and Prompter give you full control over your delivery. And now I'm like waiting. There, like I could kind of read what the next line was, but it took too long. And that's not natural. And the whole reason we use teleprompters is to try to look natural. So I'm gonna give it a break. I'm gonna pause and let's just make sure we're on the right part here. I'm gonna hit play again and try this again. Ready to roll the camera? Whether it's a video script or talking points, Camera Hub and Prompter give you full control over your delivery. You wanna scroll? Camera Hub and Prompter give you full control over your delivery. Let's pause that. That is not optimal. That can't happen. The whole purpose of using prompters so that there's no friction points like this. And in fact, not only is it a friction point, it's a friction point that didn't exist until I got the prompter. So it got me thinking about ways to fix this. So I've come up with 
some solutions. There is another problem here, which I honestly believe that this is over-engineering at its finest. You've got these chapters, right? And I get it. Like, look, if I click on them, look, prompter is going to scroll to where it left off. And I feel like that's okay. That's not bad. Here's the problem. I select this. You'll notice that select all is grayed out. Now, if I were to like not click on anything and go to select all, it's still grayed out. Now, if I were to use the keyboard shortcut, look at that. It's only selecting the chapter. I like to use like Apple Notes or Notion or some kind of cloud interface or even a different program to do my editing. I'm just more comfortable in it. Not totally comfortable in Camera Hub. So if I was doing all of my editing in Camera Hub, which I don't believe you can cloud sync to anything, but if I was and I wanted to like have all of my script that I worked for hours on, if I wanted to copy all of it, select all and copy to another app, I can't without having to like go through every section and select them like this. That is just terrible over-engineering, and it's really sad because Elgato, I love the stuff you make. I use a Stream Deck XL probably more than anybody for my workflow, and the, what was it, the Camlink 4K was amazing when that thing came out, and I see a lot of the cameras you're putting out and all sorts of stuff, so please, please, if nothing else, you gotta fix the way that you do scripts because this is obtuse. Now... Let's get to the solutions. And by the way, that's plural because different setups will require different things. If you're on an Apple Silicon Mac, which I am right now, you need to download two things, okay? One of them will be paid, one of them will be free. I'm gonna explain that later. But here's a hint, you won't even need the iPad if you use Apple Silicon. So again, one paid app, one thing that's free. If you're on an Intel machine, and that even includes Windows machines, you'll need the physical iPad itself, and you'll wanna buy two apps. So in that case, on the Intel machines, you need to purchase two apps. First, the prompter software, Prompt Smart Pro, which you'll be installing on the iPad itself, and don't worry about the in-app purchases. If I go here, we're in Prompt Smart Pro now. It is a little pricey, but for the value you get out of it, it's completely worth it. So I got a list of my scripts here and I like that I can just copy things right out of notes or if um, your iCloud sync, you can paste from your Mac, that's pretty cool. So if I were to go into like the example that we did earlier, you know, I can go in here, I can kind of resize it, I can do all my editing, I can, again, edit on the computer and then just paste it over with, you know, the continuity features in macOS. That's pretty slick, but then if I'm done with it, I'd save it, but I didn't make any changes. So we're just gonna go back. And then also, I can go in here and then you can change your font, you can change your font size, you can change your font color, you can change the background color. If you find that you're using too bright of, bright of a background and it's bleeding on the screen, you can adjust all that. Scroll text is cool because of this voice track technology. That's what we were using to scroll the prompter. And you can adjust the speed, which is really cool. You also have manual scrolling options. And then your standard teleprompter stuff, because here's the thing, this obviously wasn't made for the Elgato prompter. It was made for those like inexpensive prompters you would find on Amazon or wherever, where like it's basically the mirror and then it's got like the hole for the camera at the back. And then at the bottom, there's like a tablet holder and you can like slide your iPad in there. So you can flip your screen, but you have the option not to do that, which is pretty slick. And then you've got a video recording mode. There's a bunch of stuff in here that's pretty slick. Mirror vertically, as we just talked about. Side margin position, so you can change your margins. That's always nice. A guide, which I have enabled that like blue line that you saw when I was doing the read, you can turn that on and off, which is also pretty cool. Yeah. I, I love this app and I think it's actually pretty amazing. And then literally you make all your settings, you hit play and then it comes up and it's loading. Now, yeah, it took a second to load, but this thing is 10 years old. This iPad Air 2 is 10 years old. It already started, but if it hadn't, you'll get like a play sign here. You just hit that and then you just say, I'm absolutely floored at how well this seems to pick up my voice even when I'm whispering. Elgato really should be taking notes because this is insane. Look at how well that picked me up compared to the Camera Hub software. That's incredible. Second, on your Windows or Mac machine, your Intel machine. For this demo, I have the last Intel MacBook Pro Apple ever made. It's a 2020 refresh of the 2019. Oh, Apple and your naming. 
I've got nothing. Our releases for the fall will be version 26. On your Intel machine, Mac or Windows, you're gonna need to purchase Air Server. And yes, I know that macOS Sequoia has this air receiver function to basically act like an AirPlay receiver for iOS and iPadOS devices. And that's cool. And it does work on Intel Macs, but there is a major issue with it, at least in my workflow. And I'm gonna get to that later. I'll talk about that a bit later on. Air Server for Intel machines. I'm gonna wildly guess that this is gonna work the same on a Windows machine. So let me know in the comments if it does um, for anybody who's used Air Server. But here, we'll go in the settings, right? It lives in the tray up here, right? And then under general, you can name your you can name your server whatever you want so that when you pull up screen mirroring on um, iPad OS or iOS, it'll just pop up as need be. So yeah, you got that. You can set security parameters, audio outputs, like if you're playing something here, like, Where's it, which audio device do you want it to roll to, which is kind of cool. You've got your display, self-explanatory. The unknown one that's here, that's the prompter, right? And then you've got mirroring and you can choose your mirroring resolution. Uh, if you're on a slower network, I guess it probably reduces the, uh, I guess the codec it's using to lower the latency. And then use software decoder only. I'm gonna guess that that's probably for older Macs that don't have like a dedicated GPU. So it would be a lot easier to use software decoding. Your fans might spin up, but whatever. And then obviously, you know, your standard advanced stuff, you can show it in the dock. That's running and that's cool. So here, we've actually got the prompter here. So for this, I wanna show you guys something. So I have this in a portrait orientation. And I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna choose my air display. Now back on the Mac, any second now, it does take a little bit. Okay, so it does come up full screen. So, and you see this little toggle, if I click that, it throws it in the window, right? And now I can drag this over to prompter. Before you full screen it here, and be careful when you full screen it, set it to landscape if that's the way you wanna use it. And then to full screen it on the prompter side, which I'm awkwardly looking at the camera as I do this, you're gonna basically double click and there you go. And then if I were to take my iPad, hit play, and we're actually gonna move my iPad like way off camera. The iPad is kind of off to the side over there and let's try reading this. And I'm actually gonna whisper, let's just try that. I am absolutely floored at how well this seems to pick up my voice even when I'm whispering. Well, that didn't work, probably because I'm too far. I'm absolutely floored at how well this seems to pick up my voice even when I'm whispering. I'm actually not talking that loud. Elgato really needs to be taking notes because this is insane. See, I even lowered my voice. Here, one more time. Oh, that's the other thing is like you literally, you can just reach over and scroll. Like I, this is extreme. I have it like way more than an arm's length away, but here, I'll just, I'll talk quietly. I'm absolutely floored at how well this seems to pick up my voice even when I'm whispering. Elgato really should be taking notes because this is insane. Caveat, I'm gonna assume that it delays a little bit, partly because I was talking quietly, but also because this is a vintage iPad Air. So keep that in mind. But I think this is fairly sick. So I've disabled the mirroring. So if you look at the prompter, you'll see the reflection of my lens through the glass and you'll see the desktop. So. If we go to my desktop on the Intel Mac, you're gonna see I'm in the menu for allow AirPlay um, 4 and you can choose everyone. So AirPlay receiver is obviously enabled. So if I go back on the iPad and I go to screen mirroring, there's Sean's MacBook Pro. It takes a second. Okay, we'll put in our AirPlay code. Part of why this is taking its sweet time is because this is a very, very old device. Okay, and there we go. Now, here's the problem. I'm gonna move you over to Elgato Prompter. And you've moved over to Elgato Prompter, but if you look at my screen, I really hope the screen recording is getting this. My main display on the Mac is disabled. So it basically hijacks, it works, although it's not nearly as smooth as Air Server, which I think is hilarious considering it's built into the kernel of Mac OS and it's a Mac native function, but it doesn't seem to work. It seems to hijack everything. If I were to use gestures and try to like, I don't know, open Safari. Yeah, there's Safari with a gesture and as soon as I click on it, it's gone because that seems to be a limitation of the way that um, the air receiver, the AirPlay receiver seems to work on Intel Macs, which is super annoying. 
Windows probably doesn't have this problem. Let me know in the comments. Right here, I'm actually gonna go back into Air Server and let this thing connect. Okay, so it connected. And I'm just gonna tap out here. Click on the screen, click on toggle, drag you over to the prompter. Pro tip, don't quickly let go because it will trip out, it's weird. So you can full screen it there, that play symbol should disappear any second now, yeah, there it goes. Now, if we go back here, I've got Lumix Tether. In my feeble attempts to be some kind of a content creator, I sort of kind of destroyed the um, HDMI port on my GH5 Mark II, that's my overhead camera. So I'm using a USB-C cord to monitor my overhead with this 2020 MacBook Pro. And it works and, and you can even control the camera, which is kind of a nice bonus. But yeah, reason I bring this up is because if you launch the overhead camera first, air display doesn't work. Air server is not happening. So keep that in mind if you're gonna go with this route and multi-purpose, um, you wanna make sure that you run air server as the first thing, like you start the mirroring and all that as the very first thing that you're gonna do before you start opening other apps. Otherwise, it's gonna misbehave. We're back on the Apple Silicon machine. Now, if you have Apple Silicon, you only have to buy one thing. You don't need to buy Air Server. You just gotta buy PromSmart Pro. Let me explain. Apple Silicon machines will run PromSmart Pro as an iPad app. That's pretty sick. And it will even take the microphone input like right now, again, I've been using it for this whole video and it's been taking the mic input from the MacBook itself to trigger the prompt smart algorithm. But there's a problem and this is where we need to download, don't worry, it's free, download a second piece of software that you might be familiar with. If I drag this over, so I'm gonna drag this and full screen it and you'll notice that the margins are all wacky. The scaling is all messed up. So if I were to play and try, let's switch back to the Apple Silicon machine. See, this isn't good. It, it's already hard to like keep up with, right? Because it's it's not gonna scroll fast enough. Let's switch back to the Apple Silicon machine. Because in this case, yeah, that that's not reasonable. So we are gonna stop this, disable the full screen, and we're gonna bring you back over here, okay? So we are back on the desktop. Here's the workaround. There's an app that a lot of us use for streaming called OBS. And you will notice I set up a macOS screen capture. And I just made the box the full size of the app. And when you click on it, don't mind the Shogun Ultra thing, by the way, that's because I'm screen recording to a Shogun Ultra because it's just easier that way. Uh, we want to do application capture and you want to choose Smart, Prompt Smart Pro. And we're going to hit OK. But you don't want to drag this whole window because then that's going to just defeat the whole purpose. So rather, I think this is one of the most underrated features of OBS. Full screen preview and we're going to choose the prompter. And if we go back to the prompter, you're gonna notice that it's scaled everything perfectly. So now if I were to go back to where I want to continue from, I'm gonna to get to the next point of this video and let's read it and talk about the rest. Elgato needs to buy out this prompt smart company and adopt their speech recognition algorithm or get good and get good fast because Harris Heller on the Senpai Gaming channel, he just teased the upcoming Prompter XL. And also this Elgato Prompter XL is big enough to function as a third monitor. This thing actually isn't released yet, but they did show it off at TwitchCon last year and they told me they have two prototypes and this is one of them. It's probably my favorite piece of hardware at the desk. I take three Japanese lessons a week and it's like I'm talking face to face with my teacher. It's worth it to have a camera mounted behind what's basically a full size monitor. Let's be clear, they need to fix this because nobody wants the current glitches, but bigger. Anyway, I hope that this helps somebody that's having problems with prompter because this really, really helped me out. It, it's made my life so much easier. And I've got a bunch of other efficiencies in the content creation space. So if you're into that, let me know in the comments because I actually wanna post more of that, like either things to solve problems, things to make your life faster, make your life easier. That's kind of a place I wanna take this channel as well on top of just reviewing tech. So let me know in the comments. My name is Sean, this has been Tech Mixer. This is probably the one part I'm not reading off the prompter and I'm out. Peace.